Good morning, everyone. Um, this is Aksa Iqbal. I'm a PGY3 internal medicine resident at Northeast Georgia. And the topic of my presentation is a guide for the management of ventricular tachycardia in complicated cardiac sarcoidosis patient. So cardiac sarcoidosis is an inflammatory condition which is characterized by a formation of non-caseating granulomas. Common complications include heart failure, uh, ventricular arrhythmias, conduction abnormalities, and sudden cardiac death. Ventricular tachycardia is a very is a common complication of uh, cardiac sarcoidosis. According to 2014 Heart Rhythm Society, Society guideline, uh, these patients are treated with immuno ventricular tachycardia in cardiac sarcoidosis is treated with immunosuppression, antiarrhythmic medication, and cardiac uh, and catheter ablation is considered as a last resort in the treatment of these patients. Um, so in our, so our patient, she was a 62 years old female. She had a past history of chronic lymphoid leukemia and she presented with shortness of breath. She subsequently developed a complete heart block, as you can see from figure one and cardiomyopathy. Before placing in a pacemaker, we decided to find out the cause of the cardiomyopathy. So left heart cath was done, which showed clean coronaries, as you can see from figure two. Um, Based on complete heart block as well as clean uh, non ischemic cardiomyopathy, uh, presumptive di diagnosis of cardiac sarcoidosis was made, and decision was made to do the cardiac MRI, which showed delayed enhancement of inferior septum, which is classic for cardiac sarcoidosis. Uh, uh, based on these findings, biventricular ICD was placed because it it can pace the heart as well as shock the abnormal rhythm shock the abnormal rhythm and bring it back to the normal rhythm. Uh, after placing an ICD, cardiac PET scan was done, which showed increased FDG uptake in the inferior septum. And based on these findings, patient was started on methotrexate outpatient. A few days later, patient presented with ventricular storm with 39 ICD shocks. At that time, patient was started on amiodrone and then she was discharged on steroids, methotrexate, as well as amiodrone. Few months later, she again presented with ventricular tachycardia with two ICD shocks. And at that point, uh, she also had COVID-19, so amiodrone was changed to maxillidine to avoid lung toxicity. But at that point, they decided that we are gonna do the catheter ablation. Uh, despite doing catheter, ab and after doing catheter ablation, she was discharged on maxillidine, methotrexate, uh, prednisone, but few months later, she again presented with uh, ventricular tachycardia with multiple ICD shocks. At that point, patient was started on sotalol and uh, and rituximab, and she was sent to another facility for more catheter ablation. But before she uh, she was uh, before uh, another facility before they could do catheter ablation, they did cardiac PET, which showed decreased FTG uptake. And it's been two years, patient has not developed any kind of ventricular tachycardia or any ICD shocks. So, so from this case report, we are trying to highlight, we are highlighting the treatment of refractory ventricular tachycardia even after catheter ablation in cardiac sarcoidosis patients. Thank you.